Welcome to VW Classic Fix. I'm Ricky, and today I'm going to show you how a fuel system works on a Volkswagen Beetle. And this should help you better diagnose issues and problems you might be having with your fuel system. Right, so here's how the fuel system on a Beetle works. Every Beetle's got a fuel tank underneath the bonnet of the car. Even though with later models, you'll most likely access the fuel filler from the outside of the car on one side or the other. And of course the tanks can vary in size and shape. Um, with the earlier models, some of them have a different neck um, and a different shape under here. These are the Camel Hump early tanks, um, which the ovals, as well as the 58 to 60 model, uh, which this is, this is a 59, had. So underneath the fuel tank, you've got a length of rubber hose, which briefly carries the fuel into a metal fuel line, which then runs down the center of the tunnel, right through to the back under uh, by the transmission, and through and into the engine bay. Then when we come round to the back of the car, we can see the metal fuel line here that's come up from the chassis through the tunnel, through the firewall here, and around to be connected to a rubber fuel hose clamped securely there, uh, which usually rests in a fuel line grommet through the firewall there. And this goes onwards to the fuel pump. And here's a Volkswagen manual fuel pump bolted to the block of the engine itself. And how these work is there's a diaphragm in here with a large spring and as that diaphragm moves up and down, it manages to pump fuel from the fuel line coming around that we've just looked at into the inlet and then out through the outlet and up towards the carburetor. And how it does that is it's got a metal push rod which is driven by the centrifugal force of the engine. So what happens is there's a, a metal push rod running vertically down through the block here and I believe it's driven by the distributor drive shaft. And as the distributor drive shaft spins round, there's a high side on one side of the spindle, which causes that push rod to lift up and down uh, in time with the engine, which will then pump enough fuel from the metal fuel pump, or the manual fuel pump rather, up towards the carburetor. And here you can see the fuel is now entering the float bowl from the fuel pump up to the float bowl here on the side of the carburetor through the top inlet. Now, one thing we obviously haven't spotted along the lines here from the fuel tank right up to the carburetor is I haven't mentioned a fuel filter. So there's a bit of debate on where you should put a fuel filter in a Volkswagen Beetle. And I used to always have one on this top line here running from my fuel filter to the carburetor. You may very well have one as well. It's quite common to put them there because they're so easy to replace. You can just simply loosen two ends and replace the fuel filter, no worries. But what happens is the heat of the engine bay, especially with standing heat, when you've switched your engine off, all of the heat uh, will rise, especially if you don't have good rubbers. You've got to have good engine rubbers to prevent heat rising. Uh, but I digress. Um, what happens is with the immense heat and things like that, this is a, a really strong German rubber fuel line and it's quite re resilient. Whereas a little plastic fuel filter, which is worth about three bucks, over, over a long period of time will just suffer a lot of stress with constant heat and vibration and things like that. And they can crack. And when they do crack, they crack right above the distributor, um, which is just a recipe for a fire, really. So once I learned this, I went and switched all of my uh, cars out for a straight fuel line running from the fuel filter, uh, excuse me, the pump to the carburetor and the same right the way back to the chassis. So you're probably saying, well, where's your fuel filter? Because they are important. Uh, to run in these old cars. Um, so what I've done is I've lifted out my fuel tank and I've extended this hose that runs from the fuel tank down to the uh, metal fuel line that runs through the car. I've extended that somewhat so that I can insert a fuel filter. So the fuel filter is now directly below the fuel tank and I recommend if you've got the energy uh, to do that and I should have a photo of that as well so I'll put that in the video or at least in the description hopefully it's coming up on the screen now and you can see that there's a fuel line coming from the bottom of the tank fuel filter and then onto the metal fuel line and that's the best place to put them because if they crack up there you're only going to lose fuel all over your front suspension and things and there's very very well a heck of a lot less that can go wrong uh, up the front end so that's just a little safety tip uh, when it comes to having a look at your fuel system and making sure that it's safe. Obviously this fuel hose here could do with a couple of hose clamps. You want to make sure you've got hose clamps everywhere. Volkswagen had designed 
uh, the original engines and fuel systems to actually not run hose clamps. Um, but I still think it's much safer too. Um, so have a look, make sure that all of your fuel lines and things are in good condition. These should be nice and pliable, not dry and creaky or anything like that. And the ends should all be very nice. Um, fairly cheap to replace and pretty easy as well. And it's a good excuse to get under and check the condition of the fuel line between the uh, tank and the body itself. And you can pop a fuel filter in there at the same time. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you found this video helpful or anything like that, please subscribe, like it and share it on social media. Um, stick around as well because we're going to be doing a lot more uh, videos into the future and I'm going to be doing posting a video up shortly on ways you can diagnose whether you've got a bad fuel pump and how to replace that and we're going to be looking at a, a few other systems on the Beetle as well so you can just better understand how your car works and then you just not have to stay up every night trying to figure out what's wrong with your car. You can go to the right place and hopefully solve the issue. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.